do you get to say which committee you want to be on? Like yeah, you, get you do. You get to be like, I want to be on this committee, this committee, and you can just join them too. There's no. <laughs> <laughs> they let you, you do it. You can just do it. <laughs> no, you say which ones you want to join, and then once you get elected, you can just join them. They can't be like, no, you can't join. You can join any committee. All right, welcome back to Macrodosing. It's Nanodosing. It is Tuesday. It is March 19th. Hope everybody had a happy, healthy St. Patrick's Day. Billy, um, uh, thank you. I know this is a very important time of year for you. Let's never forget the time where Billy took, I think, a full week off to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Uh, but we got a lot to get to today, and it's brought to you by the Rent app. We've got something truly special for all the renters and landlords out there paying rent. It's something we all have to do. Let's be honest. It can sometimes be a bit of a hassle. But what if there was a way to make it all easier, more straightforward, even beneficial for your financial future? Well, introducing the Rent app, it's the ultimate tool for renters everywhere. Rent app takes the hassle out of paying rent by depositing your payments directly into your landlord's bank account. Everyone hates paying rent. No more trips to the ATM, no more mailing checks, no more managing balances and multiple apps. Just simple, direct transactions that make life easier for both you and for the landlord. There are no fees, no weekly limits. Rent app is completely free for you to use. No need for your landlord to create an account. It's completely free for them too. The Rent app is also about helping you build a brighter financial future by optionally reporting your on-time rent payments to the three major credit bureaus. Rent app brings you one step closer to home ownership and helps you boost your credit score. So why wait? Head to the Rent app, download the Rent app today, follow Rent app at Rent app on Instagram and Twitter for our listeners an exclusive deal. Go to rent.app/barstool to get 50 bucks back. On your first rent payment and if you're a landlord go to rent.app slash landlord to get paid on time and without hassle all right we're back billy is with us arian's joining in a second billy is in iceland right now um billy how's the volcano doing it might be a problem it we're it might be a little bit of a problem i i will try i will definitely try to get home as well as i can i really need to get home but uh it's bubbling there's magma yeah. Um, this is all going to make a great YouTube video that will be on the Macrodosing YouTube. Um, there's some drama. There's some drama. Yeah, just like a serious, a serious volcanic eruption taking place in Iceland right now. They're evacuating towns and stuff. Uh, there's magma that's just like bulldozing houses. This is a volcano that erupted uh, a few months ago, right? And it, yeah. it created a big headache. So um, are there are flights suspended going in and out of Iceland or are things still on time there? No, so stuff I got in on time. Um, I'm gonna be honest. This trip, there's been a lot going on. You know, a little bit of stuff with uh, on the horizon. Uh, so I wasn't really keeping tabs on the volcanoes. You know, uh, I was just like, if my flight gets canceled, it gets canceled. They'll like never let me fly in if there's like a serious volcano issue. Uh, they did, and I'm here and uh, was driving from the airport uh, into you know some of the places I was going, and I saw the magma. It was red, it was glowing, it was dark out, but it was pretty damn bright from the magma. Um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Right now, I'm in the part of the country that is far from the volcanoes. Um, I'm trying to pick up as many of the Icelandic lifting stones as I can. Um, hopefully, uh, I get to all of them. Uh, one does. I, yeah, there's stones, and uh, you weren't allowed to get on the boats to go Viking and you know do Viking stuff unless you could pick up those stones. I like that uh, Viking as a verb. Mom, I'm going to yeah. go Viking today. No, well, no, you went Viking yesterday. You're gonna get sick of it. That's the original usage of the word. A Is Viking. It really? Yeah, yeah, you go Viking. So uh, hopefully, I can pick up one of these stones. The people over here are units, uh, absolute units. Um, it's nuts. Okay. First thing I did when I got off the plane uh, and I like went to get a coffee because it was early in the morning, the person behind the uh, counter was a woman and she was taller than me, uh, shoulders broader, super athletic looking, um, but it was it was something to see. And I was like, you just work as a barista. Like you're not, this is like, you don't need to be this big to be a barista. You There's other things you could be doing. Uh, you should be was, out hunting. Yeah, <laughs> like you should be out what? building a house. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it was pretty wild. Um, so got some exciting stuff coming uh, from that. It's gonna be the first video I edit and put together 
Well, no, I second. To, Don't forget about about the basketball highlights. Right, but this one is going to be – we're using Premier. We're cutting. We're trying to be Scorsese over here. It's it's going to be fun. All right. Billy on his little Vike ride. I like that. Um, yeah. He is in Iceland. Big T's in studio. We got Mad Doug McKenzie behind the glass. Uh, a lot has happened, Billy. I'm glad that you brought up like things on the horizon because the last episode of Macrodosing, it was Billy Football announces his running for Congress. You did a whole PowerPoint and everything. We talked about it. Uh, you fielded some questions from us on abortion, Ukraine, Israel, the whole nine yards. And uh, I, I felt like we had a lot of good momentum going. And then about, I'd say, an hour after the show was done taping, Billy tweeted out, I am officially running for Congress. And he had a screenshot of uh, the, I don't know, FEC filing or whatever that you did. And we were all very excited about it. And then um, Dave was really into it, too, by the way. Dave's he loves the storyline. And then about 30 minutes after that, I got a call from Billy uh, just like yelling at me, just being like, fuck you. Are you going to fire me? And I'm like, Billy, I have no idea what's going on right now. And I guess Billy was afraid that he was violating campaign finance laws. And so he had to tragically suspend the campaign after 30 minutes of of officially running for Congress. Grand opening, grand closing for Billy Football's uh, congressional campaign. So he could get his ducks in order, right? I think I believe that's what you said. You wanted to get your ducks in order, and uh, yeah. So there's there's some paperwork that goes into it, and then I put Billy on the live stream we were on, and Billy started talking about the issues that he was having dealing with, like people sending him Venmos, and I was like, Billy, you need to shut the fuck up right now and stop saying words. And he just kept incriminating himself over and over and over again, uh, and so I encouraged Billy to stop talking at that point. Um, but for a lot of people out there, they were upset because the campaign got started. We had all this momentum behind it. It was a, it was a great episode that we recorded, um, felt really strongly about, about the direction that the country was going in where Billy football was running for Congress. And then 30 minutes later, you had to suspend the campaign. So the people want to know, like, is the campaign coming back, Billy? Um, there will be a grand reopening on the horizon. Uh, just stay tuned. Nothing official is announced, um, but we are getting our ducks in order and we are full. We're, we're locking full and loading. We're okay. lo loading. That up. should be the campaign uh, slogan, getting this country's ducks in order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like so, locking and loading. <laughs> so what's funny. And I, I thought about this when, um, when the show came out and Billy did his whole PowerPoint and expressed his platform. Uh, there's like, there's, maybe a half a percent chance that one day Billy football ends up being like president of the United States. And it's my fault. And if that happens, I will, I will commit. I will commit. Commit. <laughs> if Billy, if Billy, if Billy becomes vice president or president, I will commit. Okay. And oh, I will put on, my, I will, that. what I'm like, commit to like a, uh, a college or an institution or a healthy lifestyle. Or a healthy lifestyle. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'll make a, a lifetime commitment. <laughs> If Billy becomes president of the United States one day, I will say, you know what? That's fair. I should commit. Like in the interest of apologizing, making good with the country, I shouldn't I shouldn't be around anymore. There's a non-zero oh. chance you have set forward a path to virtually destroy the United States. Yes. Oh, yeah. Let's let's be a little more positive here. You know, I think that uh having young people who want to give service to their country in whatever way they feel they can is yeah. more appropriate. I think, you know, you could never uh, be a Navy SEAL. Uh, you wanted to, you wanted, you wanted to, well, you wanted to go back and do it all over again and become a Navy SEAL. Uh, but unfortunately that window had passed you. So uh, running yeah. for Congress, that's, that's the next best thing. I mean, look, uh, I think uh, moving forward, we need a, a younger voice in Congress. I, I love I love the that. change in He's tone. He's already with Billy. going into I love, his. I, I love I think, the change in tone with Billy. I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree <laughs> on that. I mean, we have people making decisions on uh, apps they don't use. We have them saddling our youth with debt, insurmountable debt, and then devaluing the dollar in order to pay back that debt, which is just disadvantaging the youth who are supposed to pay it back again. I, I have mean, a question look, for you, Billy. Think it's since, the worst idea. Since you're educated on all the policies, um, there's always been one thing I've wondered about the debt and the deficit, all that stuff. Uh, because ever since I was a kid, they had like the clock up and they're like, look right. at this debt. We're saddling our grandchildren. We're ruining their futures. And it's something that people always talk about. Uh, but it's it, but nothing bad has happened yet. So can you explain to me why uh, it's going to happen to the next generation? 
Well, because we're going to get to the point where the U.S. GDP does not pay back the, the debt payments, the interest rates that we owe. The interest that we owe, not only just the principal, but we're going to get to the point where the GDP cannot pay back all of the loan servicing that we have taken. And by the way, we owe that money not only to other countries, but we literally owe it to the American people. Most of the debt is owned by pension funds and uh, you know social security in the United mm -hmm. States. So not only do they which have you already us in said debt, you're not going to touch, they ever. have us in debt to ourselves. So mm -hmm. we'll we'll look at it, but you know just stay tuned, keep an open mind. You know we're giving it the best shot we have in 100 percent effort, and honestly. It's it's great to have like, you know, being in Iceland, there's a lot more community spirit. There's sort of it's it's actually very inspiring to see how uh, people treat community and how they give back to their communities. And so you're saying honestly, you like other countries more than America. I just think that us Americans, we need to take inspiration. Not America uh, first. And Iceland do, first. Yeah. Philly football. Oh, and Pick do, up the heavy stones. <laughs> yeah. And look, I honestly we we got to do it for the next generation. Like is, we got a lot I, to clean up. So. I have I have officially lost control of the plot. Uh, Billy <laughs> Billy has gone rogue. Billy uh, has taken this bull by the horns, and uh, I I created a monster. I created a monster. Now let's see what the monster can do. The monster will fight for you. I feel like Oppenheimer. <laughs> I feel I feel like been in the lab for years working on this project, working on the mind of Billy football. And we did a test. We did a test run on it, and I put the goggles on and everything last Wednesday, and uh, it blew up. It definitely blew up. But now, that monster's out of the cage. Remember when we said there was a small chance that what we did could destroy the world? Yeah, I believe it already did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at right now. So um, I'll take whatever criticism comes my way for that, Billy. I'm I'm excited to see where you go with this. Uh, I did want you to run against George Santos because the, it, the premise of this was a liar takes on a liar. But now Billy's just, Billy's just out on his own, and he's Billy's going to be. I I look forward to hearing like your campaign advisors, like hearing their talking points start to creep into your everyday vernacular, and you're just talking about stuff that I've never heard you say before. And I'm like, oh, where'd that come from? Billy's towing the party line. Look, I, look, why why not? Why not? That's that's one of those things. Like, look at like honestly, George Santos is running for Congress. I think we can all agree, and as we saw on this show, I basically got him to admit that he allegedly, well, now we got to tow some legal jargon, that he <laughs> was go. working for, a, this is fact, he was working for a company of less than nine people that was running a Ponzi scheme. If you don't know what your company's doing and there's only nine people, I that's for other people. And we have that person in Congress. Look, I've said some stuff. Well, not anymore, he got kicked out. Um, but that's why he's running for the other seat. Yeah. I think, you know, I don't have to do this. No. I've no. literally been toying with it and thinking in my head, like, oh man, like there's parts that there's going to be a lot of adversity ahead, but I owe it to this country that has given me so much to try to give back and serve it as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, are are you going to take a salary? Um, I, the thing is, I, that salary is I from it's a good like it's a it's a salary a yes. to live on. Billy will I will take a salary. Well, I think I can't work anywhere else if I yeah. don't take oh, the salary. That, that's a good point. So, um, Billy, I know that you've been on the right side of history for a long time on this topic that uh, people in Congress should not be allowed to trade stocks. They should. Oh not yeah, be no. Involved. I'm. I'm going to practice exactly what I preach. I'm not. What about what about like regulating cryptocurrency while you own cryptocurrency? Are you going to also uh, sell all your crypto stuff? Well, I think my savings and my investment. I'm not. I. I don't think there's any way. Let's. Let's. Come on. We're. 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 we're, we're let's get the signatures first before we ask these big questions. Well, I know people. People are going to want to know. Like, if somebody in Congress is in charge of creating legislation around cryptocurrency, I would like to know if they stand to gain based on the legislation they write. I think there's going to be, I mean, we could also make water illegal and everyone has a stake in water. Let's let's start. <laughs> we're not going to be Nancy pelosi over here, but we're going like to be Doom. making rational <laughs> the plot decisions. <laughs> we can make water illegal. Are you planning on making water illegal, Billy? 
No. Is that a trial let's, balloon? Let's, what's everybody else been up to? Big T, <laughs> I'm pumped about our squad heading into March Madness for our annual t- like company project. So I can't wait to see what happens on the horizon. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm very excited about it. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a fun week. Celebrated St. Patrick's Day. Went out, hit Chicago. Chicago, dying the River Green is awesome. So I want to talk about this. Uh-huh. So I went to that. Mm-hmm. Um, what what you were there? Yep. What what are your thoughts? So it's a very green green, like the river. No Neon joke. Green. It becomes green. It looks like ooze from the Ninja Turtles. Uh, I had a good time. I was on a boat, and that was a lot of fun. As they were dying the river, that was cool. But there's a lot of like standing around on the sidewalks and like walking around downtown. It's a big waving event too. I was on the boat and you just spend the entire time waving at people yeah. that are standing on the riverbanks watching the boats go by. So I got a lot of waves in, a lot of really good waves. And uh, then went to some bars and they were very crowded, very crowded. It was the ultimate, uh, I don't have to do that ever again. Yeah, you checked it off the list. Me. Yeah. Yeah, I would prefer to go to like, just go out, hit some small bars. Uh, stay away from the crowds as much as possible. Um, that's probably just me being old. Actually, this St. Patrick, it was ideal for me because I got to go out, do a fun activity, went on the boat, had some drinks, went to a bar, had some drinks, and then I was on my couch by 4 p.m. And it was awesome. I was home by 1130. Were you really? Oh, it was great. Got to watch college basketball all day. I, I do love an activity in the morning that gets you home. Yeah. Obviously, I wasn't out with the degenerates all day. I just went to the, the river thing. Yeah. It was fun. It was a fun time. And St. Patrick's Day in Chicago was like a big deal. A crazy big deal. Why did you jump in the river? Crowded. I did not jump in the river, no. I think they arrest you for that. Mm-hmm. They do? Uh, I don't know who. I saw two cops for about 1.1 million people. So Why oh, really? would they arrest you for that? I jumped in the lake the other day, and it was t- it's totally legal to jump in the lake. They have a beach. So, like, why can't you jump in the river? Because uh, hey. the river is part of, like, a Chicago waterway. But isn't all of uh, Lake Michigan also? I don't know. I don't think that you're allowed to go swimming like where, com- where commercial boats are going. I'm not sure. I mean, that's I all Lake Michigan. I don't anyway, think the water is regulated like Lake Michigan is. Like, I don't think the water is clean. Like, I think it might be dangerous. I'm just saying, I don't think there's anything legally wrong with jumping in the river. And if I'm ever there, I'm, doing a, I'm throwing a backflip off a bridge. And if so. Billy was your congressman, he would let you swim in the river. And the reservoir. I think, I think we'll look at that. Public waterways, I think, should be used by the public. We'll look into that. Okay. It's still fuck deer, though, right? Fuck what? Fuck deer. Uh, we're going to have to amend oh, some are you of those selling, You're crazy. abandoning all your talking points, Billy? Well, Anti, well, you're not going anti-deer? Billy's going to be the most establishment Republican ever. We're not going to. We're going to be laissez, laissez-faire on the, the deer Problem. Hey, you you said any deer, any age, you can kill. Yeah, just I need to get this passed once I'm in there. So we gotta like start like massaging some of it. Come on. Okay, massage the deer. Uh, no, like massaging. Like, oh no, you can't. Like, just be like, oh deer, we just gotta classify them as a pest, right? Mm-hmm. So like, once they're a pest uh, animal, like a, a rat, right? Then it's open season. You can legally kill any rat. Any yeah, age, what, any size. What are your thoughts on, on NIL in college football, college sports? It's a big talking point in Congress these days. I mean, there's been a huge misappropriation of uh, funding for athletes that they just haven't, you know, they, they deserve the fruits of their labor. And I think that we will determine the best course of action when it comes to NIL. There may be, there may need to be some sort of regulation, but also it might just be open season. Oh, so it's a we'll, big government we'll guy. Yeah, big government. So you want that? You think government should be involved in in sports? Honestly, no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, it's not what you just said five seconds ago. I mean, I think we got to make sure that you know some of this stuff's being taxed. I think you know we just can't have willy nilly you know I mean, money getting thrown around. They're paying taxes. It's income. Okay, then I'm fine. I'm fine with it. All right, more taxes. We're just gonna, Billy yeah, yeah, so this guy's big government, more taxes. What are you running as? Just common sense, dude. Literally. I, I, just, yeah. I, I love the fact that Billy is going – he's going to do a 180 on, on all of his cool PowerPoint t- talking points. 
Look, what, like, but seriously, I just told you we're going to make it open season on deer on site. We just have to like be like, we should register deer as pest animals because they carry worse diseases than rats. Like Lyme's disease is worse than the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague can be cured with uh, antibiotics. Lyme's disease, no one really knows. Like how like long-term Lyme's is terrible. I would argue it's worse. I say that deer are actually more dangerous to the public than rats in some instances. And once we get them registered as a pest species, then we can literally be open season 24 seven. Billy, I just did a search on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of people calling you big gov bill. Do, do you have a response to that? Um, tell them I mean, that they're I just, just keep gonna refreshing. See, there's more and more. They're just going to see big bill and we'll get through with that. Uh, big to you. How, how was your, you? You were at the parade. You're at the parade. No, have a good time. No, did well, not go to, to the parade. Only you were at the, the, river, the river. What were you drinking? Nothing. It's 10 AM. Nice. I had my first shots before 9 AM in a long time. Like I, I haven't, wild. I haven't drank that early since I was trying to think the last time I took, I took a shot of liquor before nine. I think it might've been in Hong Kong. I oh think when I was getting ready to go to the sevens tournament. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a blast. I like 11, like, 11 AM is the 5 PM of day drinking. Yeah, anything before that's a little nuts. Now you got to get started. That's gotta have a great time. You know what I did? I kind of feel bad about this one. Uh, went to a bar afterwards. And I, uh, I always have my touch tunes account loaded up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, right before I left, I played do Haas by Ramstein like five times. <laughs> and then I left. I know what that is, but Billy said he doesn't. Uh, it's a German heavy metal song from like the nineties. Wait, I know do Haas. Oh, okay. No, you told me you didn't know. Oh yeah. Du, I texted big du T on Haas. the side. Do Haas mish. So, you know that song? Sounds electric. It's a, it's a very aggressive song. I wouldn't be surprised if they unplugged the jukebox like five minutes after I left. It's Dude, a, it, it was one of my favorite things to do. I love doing that, but it, I also recognize that it's an asshole move. But I still I can't help myself sometimes. Dude, I'm I'm gonna investigate the Icelandic metal scene because there's some there's the next do house here, and we just need to find it. I've, yeah, so, I've been seeing some crazy stuff. So you said that you're you're going on an expedition to find um, the best steroids in Iceland. How's that going? Um, well, I just want to know what the strong men are doing, or they might just be natty. But I did find the berserker mushroom, which I know they're all doing before lifting meets. It's have it's, you have you tried it yet? I'm gonna tr maybe put out a video depending on the results of future endeavors. Um, but it's literally in Icelandic, fly agarica. Um, in Icelandic is called uh, Berserk Joss Vepper. Okay. Yeah. We, what so does it do? It makes you go berserk, and it's called Berserk Joss Vepper. Yeah, I need you to try that mushroom. I may be doing it on video depending, and then releasing it depending on uh, stuff. Uh, I, 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 love, I love that this campaign is now it's nerfing Billy. No, Maybe um, this is what we need. but did you guys see the last actually, actually, episode? Actually, Mad, Mad Dog might be right. Like this might be a net positive for the podcast because <laughs> like Billy has to has to like dilute himself just a little bit. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe Billy was getting a bit out of touch and this is bringing you back to reality. A Some bit. people just mature and they like turn 25, 26 years old. And and they get locked in. Other people they need like a little kick in the butt. And for some people that might be Running for having Congress. to run for Congress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because they registered as a joke, but then realize, oh shit, if I don't follow through on this, the FEC can actually do criminal things like criminal charges. So No, I think this is gonna be the like, you Billy's can't frontal pull out. lobe. <laughs> I know. This have is to gonna be how Billy's frontal lobe things. snaps. I, I um, also I, I love that Billy is now saying that he's having to go through all the way with this because otherwise he'd be in prison. <laughs> like if you don't yeah, actually run that, for Congress, true? you're going to jail, Billy. <laughs> I have to <laughs> declare my finances uh, be within 30 days of registering with the FEC. Um, there's a lot of stuff I didn't think you'd have to do, but you know, it's a learning experience. Um, but did you guys see Last Chance Uganda? I did, yeah. So what, hap what I said happened, happened. It wasn't that insane? Wait, which one? The first, the game. Did you watch the game? Yeah. 
like they weren't moving the first down markers. They jumped the ball on the second touchdown and they just called half randomly when it was fourth and 40. Yeah. They, uh, they, they kicked the ball away when you're trying to run. We Yeah. I mean, tough. you also yelled at Donnie. Yeah. Because he almost screwed us. Yeah. He was, he was a little bit behind on the chains. <laughs> no, so no. Really... He was moving the chains the other way. So we had just gotten a huge fourth down stop and it looked like a fumble at the time. I didn't know, but instead of moving the first down markers back, uh, instead of just keeping the first down markers where they were, Donnie was moving the first down markers back to fourth and 40. So it would mm-hmm. have been like fourth and 10. And I was like, this is just what I told you not to do Donnie because we weren't getting first downs and we weren't getting good field position because they kept moving it back for the Kenyans. But it's confusing uh, in the time, but yeah, man, just reliving that was just stress. That was, that was stress, man. When's, when's the next episode coming out? Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be doing a live stream probably around 6 o'clock with uh, Donnie and I, a little Q&A. Um, don't, it's going to be Wednesday afternoon, probably after 5, definitely, but before the 8 p.m. Eastern time um, uh, live watch. Um, it's... If you have any questions, pop in the chat uh, during the live stream. It should be fun. It, it'll be on Donnie's socials. Um, but yeah, that was – it was insane. Like we played in a huge mud bowl and the guys played their asses off and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great series. So go check it out on um, the Wonton Don YouTube page. It's fantastic. One of the best things I've ever done in a long time. And on Rumble. Um, so uh, Big T. I watched the University of Tennessee game with you. Mm-hmm. Tough break in the SEC tournament. Yeah, but, but those you're still the a two SEC seed. tournament doesn't matter. Still a two seed. Well, I was going to say that no team has ever lost their first game of their conference tournament and went on to win the national championship. Does That's that concern fine. you? No. Not not concerned at all. Still got no. the two seed. You were going to get a two seed anyways. Yeah. I mean, Auburn won the SEC tournament. They gave them a four. They, they, they don't count those games. If you had won the entire tournament, though, maybe a one seed. Maybe, but they they would have found a way to screw us. We wouldn't have got. And I, the the only uh, I wish they'd lost by four instead of forty be, playing horrible. But yeah, yeah, they'll they'll figure it out. Yeah, Arian just jumped on. Uh, Arian, how's it going? Going good, man. Uh, bad day on the golf course. I'm sorry. Would you shoot? Uh, I was just I just played a nine. And I stopped keeping score. I was so frustrated. I, I, I threw my driver. Oh. Did you break it? No, I just threw it forward. And if there was water there, it would have like if it was a water hole, I'd have that shit, I'd have lost that bitch. But luckily there wasn't. All right, got to get back on that horse. Um, Aaron, you just missed it. Billy uh, is. We were talking to him about running for Congress, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got like buttoned up Bill now. Buttoned up Bill. He's he's going to be taken by the establishment. I can already tell. He's dialing it back. He's locked in. We've do do? we've lost control of the plot with Billy Football officially. What do you do? <laughs> well, Just, he, they're 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 blowing this way out of proportion, Arian. Um, look, the best thing when approaching policy is common sense. So we just we just we just need to have some. You know, there's no, the adults are supposed to be adulting in Congress, but they're not. So some young bucks got to come in and you know lay it down and try to you know fight for their generation which has been screwed we think about tiktok what should we do about tiktok um honestly i think that it's basically a lot of its holdings are ccp higher ups i think through the defense of like it, it is against our national security interests to have tiktok be owned which is a huge data harvesting app be owned by a foreign nation which might be a belligerent to the united states so we is if it's owned by a, a non um, government entity, then that's fine. But literally, we can't have another government with that access to data in our country. Uh, so yeah, Arian, I, I was saying that we've lost control of the plot a little bit because Billy is now he's uh, he's running for a different seat. He's going to go like balls to the wall. He's dialing back some of his takes already, and and you'll you'll start to hear it just. I know, I know you can understand Billy. You're one of the few out there that can 
really kind of pick apart what he's actually trying to say. Uh, you'll see you'll see through Billy in the in the next coming weeks where he's dialing himself back. But as Mad Dog said, it might be a good thing. This might be what Billy needed to uh, to rein himself in. So that that remains to be seen. But also, it's like we've we encouraged him to do this, and now we've lost control of it. It's uh it, it's going to go in directions we haven't seen. Um, and at, at one point, I would not be shocked if Billy was like a eighty year old senator at some point. Just like a lifetime congressperson, because I don't want to do we, this for life. I want to do a couple it, stints and then just get out of there and just leave my mark, hang it up. That career you, politicians is everything I'm kind of against. Billy, do you have have you thought about the fact that there's a lot of things that you've said and done over the years on tape, on video, and podcasts um, that your opposition will be combing through? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm an open book. I've grown up in front of America, basically, so. Yeah, I mean, fire away. I'll own all of it. A lot of it was stupid. I won't stand by the some of the words I said because you know I was young, dumb. We're we're Full all calm. there. I mean, yeah. This I mean, guy I'm doesn't 20, know how to pronounce Jack Nicholas. Yeah, I mean, hey, exactly. This guy so, thinks that Zach Wilson is is as good as Patrick Mahomes. I mean, we'll we'll. I'm I'm gonna like honestly. I have nothing really to hide. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be good promo for the show. <laughs> I hope you guys if if anything, it will be that. If you know, if I don't get the signatures by April fourth, it would have been a good swing of the bat. But so are we doing the rally? You talked about the rally a lot last we're, week. We're we're the plans are if would you like to come to the rally? I mean Stu Finer is in. Yeah, I, when is it? Uh it's either gonna be this weekend or next weekend. I I need a we're just, Plans are in place. We're figuring stuff out. Let's just keep going with the show. I okay. can't talk about all this stuff because I got to see stuff. I got to take it one weekend at a time. Uh, I will be in New York this weekend, though. Um, kind of one of those moments where the universe all comes together and there's like a path that's been put in front of me. And so I have to take advantage of it. Uh, I've had, as, as I mentioned, I have a wedding that I've committed to. I committed to it like six months ago. And I always knew it was going to be opening weekend of March Madness. It's a Friday wedding uh, on the Friday of March Madness, and uh, it's going to be in Brooklyn. And I was always thinking, well, that it's unfortunate because I'm going to have to miss like the live stream. That's a very busy weekend here at Barstool uh, where we have a lot of plans, a lot of sponsored activities. But it was something that was important to me. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go to this wedding. And uh, it just so happens that James Madison University is playing against the Wisconsin Badgers on Friday night. Where's that game going to be? It's going to be in Brooklyn, about 10 minutes from where the wedding's going to be. It's like, this is a perfect, this is the universe just opening up a door for me. And so I have to walk through it. Um, the wedding's going to start at like five. I would imagine the ceremony will end or the reception will probably end around nine. Uh, the game tips off at 940, 10 a, minutes away. That's a late game. It's the latest game. It's the last game that they have. So... I'm gonna. I'm, it's a black tie wedding. Wait, yeah, against Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's JMU against Wisconsin. Is is you Big Cat locked going? into the selection show? Yeah. I can yeah. tell. Yeah. Is Big Cat going to the no, game with you? No, because we have to do streams. Like ideally, I would like to be doing a, a live stream of JMU against Wisconsin, um, but I, I I'm going to be out of Chicago, so I can't do that. Big Cat uh, should go to the game with you. I think he wants to be doing the live stream. Okay. That makes sense. So that's crazy. It's insane. It's insane. It's a black tie wedding. It's the most formal wedding I've ever been to. I'm not gonna have time to change. Oh God. So I'm just gonna have to go from the wedding in a tuxedo to the JMU game. This is this We're going is dancing. Worse. It's it's the big dance. This is worse than the Bears Washington football team Thursday night football game. This well, this could act this could actually rip apart the podcast. Well, no, because we always knew it was a possibility. We talked about that because as as last – like when JMU qualified, we kind of saw what their seed was looking like. And then as Wisconsin's advancing, um, we figured that Wisconsin would be either a 5 or a 6 and that JMU would be either a 11 or a 12. And if it's a 12-5 or 11-6, that means there's a 25% chance those two teams are going to play against each other. End up being a 5-12 – and yeah, I we we knew it was going to happen. We we saw this coming a mile away, so we're prepared for it. 
Uh, the Dukes have nothing to lose. It's us against the world. We very rarely get to the tournament. Um, really, I think the second time in my life that JMU has been uh, in March Madness. So uh, we knew that it, it might happen. So it wasn't the most shocking thing. But the shocking part of it was that it's in Brooklyn. That's on Friday when I'm going to be in Brooklyn. So uh, I, I I'll be going to the game. I'm excited about that. Um, I don't. Yeah, I'm ner I'm a little bit nervous because I could see my heart get ripped out of me like in front of my it, I could be there like in the front row watching the Badgers just rip my throat out. So it's a it's a very distinct possibility, although Jamie's a good team. If we shoot the ball well, we're uh, live by the jump shot, die by the jump shot team. So if we make our threes, then we can beat anybody, I think. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Aaron, do you have a bracket? Has it started yet? They announced it yesterday, yeah. Oh, no. I don't got a bracket. You got a college. Friends, honestly. <laughs> do, do you root for uh, Tennessee? Or are you going to root for, uh, like, Houston? Uh, I don't really do much rooting anymore except for the Lakers, like my only sports team I root for. But I'll definitely watch and hope that they do well. You know what I'm saying? Like, But I think the only sports, like, fandom I do is, like, f like for the Lakers. Yeah. And yeah. um, I take it back. And golf, like if I, if I, if there's a player that I like, I'll root for. Who's your favorite player? Uh, I mean, Tiger until he retires. But favorite, you know, who's always in the mix? Uh, John Rahm, and um, obviously, you know, Scotty. I like I like Scotty's game. Yeah, he learned how to putt. It's insane. Yeah, and look, Rory's um, vice putt, putt, and he won back to back tournaments. It's it's kind of insane. Yeah, Rory shouldn't have told him that. Yeah, it's tough. Cause it looked like he don't he don't look like he won what he won Arnold Palmer and then he won the players. Yep. Those are two big tournaments, man. Yep. The fifth majors. If we do yeah. uh if we do a macrodosing bracket challenge, what should the stakes be? I'm always shit at those because I always go back to like nineties, two thousand football. When I'm deciding on who's going to win a game, because <laughs> I don't, I've, I obviously didn't watch anybody in college basketball this year, so it's just like sometimes I pick whose colors I like the best. I'm just horrible. Arian's got Nebraska in the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> Never won a tournament game, Nebraska. It's shocking, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Playing Texas A&M in the men's and women's tournament a week after their AD left to go to Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Stars are lying. I'm going to go with uh, Tommy Frazier. There, yeah, I like it. <laughs> I think he's gonna get, think he's gonna get him. <laughs> I like it. It should be the beat Mad Dog challenge. Mm -hmm. What if you get if we we can open didn't up? She like win. A, she won last time we did this, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah, we still owe her some Crown Royal apple. Crown apple. Yeah. Oh shit. You know what? I'm gonna drizzly that right now. <laughs> um, if if you can beat Mad Dog, hey, get get her, get her too. I'll pay you back. Okay, we can do like a public a public pool, right? Yeah, that's what I think we did. No, I don't know. I don't know what we did two years ago. That was a long time ago. Mad Dog against the world. Yeah. I was talking to the guys I'm earlier today, and I was, like, asking them how, like, who they're choosing for their brackets or whatever. I haven't filled mine out yet. Um, it isn't, like, UConn. Like, everyone's not picking UConn. I think everyone is picking Yeah, people like no, UConn. every person I've seen or talked to has picked UNC, including you, PFT. I did. Well, no, no. I have, I have UConn in the finals. You have UNC winning, don't you? No, no. I have I have Houston winning. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, That's I, on me. That's I, on me. I have Houston, UConn in the finals. Okay, uh, but you also don't... You don't have UConn winning either, then. Uh, correct. I don't have UConn winning. Everyone's everyone's not going with UConn, and that... I don't know about that. I don't know. I think a lot of people are going with the Huskies. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of UNC. But, um, yeah, no, I have no rhyme or reason. Um, and I... Is Kansas good this year? No. Not really. Okay. Yeah, no, I um, See, and like, I know Duke's not good that like, that good this year. Drake versus Washington State, like I'm. I, Drake's I'm, a wagon. Drake just, also. Just, I'm thinking of the the rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, can Drake beat Washington State? You're probably not. It's a one v five. That's how I think of this shit. Like, cause I have no idea, bro. Mm -hmm. Houston versus Longwood. I do know. Houston. We watched Houston versus Texas when I was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're the number one seed, so I'm gonna go with them. Uh, Duke, Vermont. I'm going. Gotta go Duke. 
Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin JMU. This is your this is your squad, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna JMU, go. JMU very go. trendy upset pick. Yeah, uh, that's, that Samford. concerns me. JMU is too trendy. Ooh, okay. Here's my upset: Kentucky and Oakland. I'm gonna go with Oakland. Oakland has the best three point shooter in the country, and Kentucky really? plays zero defense. Yeah. There we go. I don't even know. What is BSU slash C O L O? So that's Boise State and Colorado who have to play each other either tomorrow, or Wednesday, and then the winner gets in. They they have oh. like play in games. Oh, um, so it used to be sixty four teams. Now it's sixty eight. So the last four teams that make it in, they have to play an extra game. Got you, got you. Okay, okay. Yeah, Gonzaga, no. Gonzaga still cracking. Duke is in the tournament though, right? Yeah. What's your yes. okay? What's I like your, that one what's guy your from sleeper? Duke. Filipowski. No, who, me. No, Jared McCain. Okay. Oh, I'm too Give me your to your sleeper, uh, Cinderella. PFT, my sleeper Cinderella. Ooh, or it would just be a Cinderella, wouldn't it? I it like just, I like McNeese to win two games. Okay, Will Wade. Uh, I like JMU to win two games too, but that's that's my homer sleeper. I have both of those teams in the Sweet Sixteen as well. You're sharp. You know ball. I like Samford a lot. Um, New Mexico's I, in. Okay, New Mexico's good. They're one of mine too. Yeah, that's the hometown right there. Yep. They're good. Uh, and then I kind of like College of Charleston as well. Uh, Big T, second round, potential looming matchup. Rick Barnes against Texas. Could be fun. Could be very fun. Also a potential matchup is Tennessee-Virginia, which would be horrific to watch. I, I am so convinced that UVA is going to win two games. Oh, now that they got in for sure. Yeah. We're going to have to watch. Why do, you, why do you feel that? Why was what's – the so storyline behind that. They were a very egregious selection to get into the tournament. They were like 20 spots lower than the next highest team that got in. Uh, there were four or five other teams that should have been ahead of them. And so now it just kind of seems like, you know, been there before, won a title recently, like they're going to go on a run now. But they're they're just abysmal to watch. It's It's draining. <laughs> they can't score. They just play lockdown defense, and every game is like 57-52. It's, it's atrocious to watch. I'm actually worried about Tennessee potentially playing them and having a Mississippi State-type game yeah. where they just lock us down and it's 49-47 with two minutes left. Yeah, they can fuck you up. They can throw you out of your rhythm. They play such a different style of basketball. The, the good news is they cannot score. Yes. Can't do it. Can't score. And everyone was mad that they got in because of, of their record, their resume, and also because now we have to watch UVA play. So I'm just convinced they're going to win multiple games. And in uh, on, do they play tomorrow or Wednesday, whichever, it's the only game on. You have to watch you have Virginia. have to standalone game, yep. yeah. Uh, When's the first game? The first four starts on Tuesday, so it starts tonight. And uh, there's two games Tuesday night, two games Wednesday night, and then – Thursday at what noon? That's the first yeah. tip. Damn, I was gonna have my hedgehog pick games by pooping on stuff like a cow. You know, like the cow uh, patty betting thing where they put a grid in wherever the cow yeah. poops. I was gonna do that, but with upsets. You should ask my hedgehog. People in, ask people in Iceland what they think. My hedgehog lost its eye, and his name's Nostradamus. And now that he lost his eye, I feel like he has better vision into like the unknown future stuff. How do you lose so. his eye? He's albino. So they go blind. And when they go blind in one eye, they think that uh, there's something in front of their eye. So they scratch it off and oh. he pulled through. Um, I thought we were going to have to like, it was literally going to be a thousand dollars to fix this guy's eye or like $50 to euthanize him. And I was like, yo dude, just pull through without this eye thing. So I don't have to make this difficult decision. And he pulled through and now he's just a one-eyed albino hedgehog. Not because you fucked his eyeball out. He fucked scratched off his own eye. Out. They like to make slander about me having sex with animals. It's, it's a thing. <laughs> Did you have sex with animals? It literally got all the way to Uganda. There was Ugandan, well, some of the players were like, "No, Yo, would why have been does everyone talk out about of my mouth?" But to each his own. <laughs> but, Billy's fallen into the classic political trap of like make your opponent deny that they fucked a pig. Right. 
<laughs> is that the first? That's that black mare thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy, have you ever fucked a pig? Um. So, yeah. Uh, the hedgehog oh, is doing well now. Oh, what? And, uh, <laughs> oh, what? Hey, that's a hell of a clip right Can there. The, <laughs> this campaign's so the off to a doing, roaring start. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a good time. Um. Great tournament. Can't ask to uh ask the people in Iceland what they think about some of these upsets. I will. I think I'll do. Uh, You're in Iceland. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm. Tr I'm making a little bit of play, a little bit of work. I'm making a YouTube video for the macrodosing YouTube. I just like was gambling on myself, and I was like, hopefully this comes out well, and I edit it well, and that we could maybe do more of these in the future. A fact finding mission. Yeah. What are you? Like, what are you here's a crazy find? fact. Uh, well, here's a crazy fact. The horses in Iceland, you're not allowed to bring horses to Iceland. And if you take one of their horses away, they can't return to Iceland ever. And it's actually a huge part of their economy is just breeding horses. And they're some of the greatest horses in the world, but their cows are actually like very underperforming and they hide them and they don't show anyone their cows because they're like very low performing cattle. They're From ashamed a, of their cows. Now, what does the cows. low performing cow look like? So their horses are like A1. They know five different ways to trot as opposed to the three usual ones a horse does. But because of the terrain in Iceland, they invented two unique trotting styles for this horse that only they know because of the different types of terrain. And their horses, they're like got beautiful coats. Uh, they, you know, have the special trotting that's specific to them, but their cattle They've been saying like our cattle are way worse than like Swedish cattle or Norwegian cattle and like we should bring in more cattle. So this these laws about livestock started in 942. That is 942 AD when they first settled that it's been illegal to bring more horses or uh, bring back a horse that left Iceland. I so feel bad are, for the horses that grow up in Iceland. Then they get sold somewhere and it's like you can never yeah. go home again. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but they take serious pride in their horses, but they they hide their cattle. So they're like, our cattle are lame. They're not, you know. Good but why are they underperforming? I, I still don't understand. What, um, what makes an underperforming cow? Uh, they don't. Their like milk yield is low compared to other uh, cattle breeds in Scandinavia that can handle the tough weather. So like. Uh, Scotland's got Highland cattle, right? That have great cattle yield. They taste good. Um, and they're like a fine quality livestock, uh, that can survive the Scottish Highlands. Um, and everyone loves them. Um, but Icelandic cattle are just, uh, you know, they're underperforming and they, are they native there. No. So basically Iceland is the only place that no one ever inhabited before it was settled. So. The Icelandic so, people are kind of like, but the cows aren't native there, and they're wondering why they're underperforming. Yeah. Huh. So, but they were brought by the first settlers there. So it there's so this is why they're a dairy breed with a small body size. Um, they can't produce that much milk per year with the best animals producing around twenty four thousand pounds of milk but on average around thirteen thousand pounds but compared to like uh swedish cattle um milk yields they make uh so the swedish red cattle makes around 7500 kilograms which is 2.2 um which is already more on average than the best icelandic cows so they're ashamed of their cattle's uh like how they compete amongst other breeds in the world so, so you're making a video about cows and horses in iceland well it's more just about anything that i find and find interesting like there's these rocks <laughs> there's these rocks that in like the whole place is like so cool it's like it's like hawaii but in ice like all the rock formations and stuff it's like minty hawaii like if hawaii is like spicy because it's hot like this is just minty hawaii hey, billy yo, billy you gotta you gotta do some boots on the ground journalism about this volcano the volcano is international news oh yeah and and the volcano's erupting as we speak that's here go get right. on it man 
yeah, so hopefully I can make it back in time and the lava flows don't get me, but I'm, I'm going to get some lava flow content. A while ago, hopefully. they did they did a bracket episode on the most delicious th the most delicious looking things that aren't actually edible, and magma was very high up on that list. I agree. Magma looks mm. so tasty. Mm, you can't drink oh, yeah. it, but it looks like it'd be good. Yeah. Looks like a pizza roll filling. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Billy, go do some some boots on the ground journalism about this volcano. I want to know more yeah. about it. Yeah. I'll I'm I'm heading back that way tomorrow Wednesday morning. I'll probably be heading back that way, so I'll I'll find it. Okay. Um also curious to know how how much of your uh aliens live beneath the Antarctica takes are you bringing with you to the campaign trail? Um we're just asking questions on the very real issue that is their UFOs and that Congress actually has to deal with them. And we need someone who's probably more versed in UFOs than most to be in Congress. Mm, so it's a good point. Uh, all right. What else we got going on today? Uh, Mad Dog, I just tried to order your crown apple. Uh, it only at a store that has like a seven day delivery. That is really okay. That is, that is okay. We'll get it eventually. We will. Uh, yeah. Marbles, marbles look good, but you can't eat them. Agreed. Yeah, like gumdrops mm. or like gumballs, yeah. Tide pods. Yeah. Any of those washing pods always. Look I bet good. I would. I would bet money that you tried one though. No, no, no. I didn't eat a Tide pod. You didn't try one. No. Gronk right. told me not to, so I didn't. If if you remember, Rob yeah. Gronkowski was the guy they enlisted <laughs> to tell people not to eat. <laughs> Tide Pods, so I, I listened to him. He really got through to me. Shout out to Gronk. Shout out Gronk. Uh, Big T, what are you teed off about? Uh, Not really teed. Uh, that was mostly the Chicago River thing. I wasn't teed off about it. It was just like a very, once you do that once, I don't need to do that again. Yeah, I agree. Like oh, it yeah, was, how was it? I saw a little video. There was, the, 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 the water's green. How'd that go? It was cool. They, yeah, once you see it, it's green, and... uh. And then you go back home. It's a very green, <laughs> green. It's amazing how green they get it. I wonder I'm if surprised. it's I wonder if it's good for the fish or not. I was thinking that they probably like lie and say actually it's made of uh, biodegradable chemicals that have nutrients in it for the fish. But when in reality it's just like the most poisonous shit ever. Isn't it just food coloring? I don't know. I don't know, but it's the plumbers that do it. That's what I learned. The plumbers union one thirty. Shout out huh. to the plumbers one thirty. It's their responsibility every year to dye the river. So they've got all these boats out there and they're just spraying green shit into the water. So it says the city of Chicago claims the dye it uses today now poses no ecosystem risks, but some organizations still question whether the event sets an appropriate culture of respect for the body of water running prominently through the city's downtown. Um, also, the Illinois EPA has been cautiously quiet about the dye used in the river while also maintaining that it is totally safe. Yeah, I think it's God. one of those things where like they tell everybody how good it is, but in reality, just fish just dying by the thousands. It says, according to OSHA and the FP EPA, that it is not hazardous. It's plant-based. It, it also contains no regulated pollutants outlined in the Clean Water Act. Okay. It's a, it's a plant-based dye that is orange until green. It turns green upon contact with the water if it didn't turn orange. Green, that's not true. Just, I don't think no, so. No, no, no. I did see uh, it was like, so I saw some boats that were shooting green dye, yeah. but then where I was, it was like an orangish red powder. Huh. Oh, so the powder. So before is, it's mixed. Before it's mixed. Okay. Because I was going to say when they're spraying it out, it's definitely green. That could cause some troubles if the Irish know what I'm talking about. Orange. Go on. Troubles. Troubles. Remember when in that Simpsons episode where they had the green Hulk fight the orange thing? Yeah. It's I think the Protestants are are orange. Oh, they're orange. Okay. Yeah. How do, how do you feel about Protestants, Billy? Religious freedom is amazing. Um uh but yeah. Harry, do you have any but, questions for Billy? Wait, you don't fuck with Protestants? <laughs> no, I, I it's no, it, it's it's a it's an Irish joke thing. What's the joke? I've never heard it. It's just like the Catholics and the Protestants have been fighting in Ireland since St. Patrick. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you're Irish. Yeah. But, oh. you know, teach their own. 
Billy or Aaron, you can ask Billy any question about policy right now, and he's gonna squirm. It's very fun. <laughs> um what uh where you at on 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 major regulations for uh climate change? Or do you believe climate change is a thing? Is it happening? I'm I'm here at the forefront of climate change, uh, and I'm doing my own investigation as we speak, and I'll get back with a better answer. You're running for a seat in Congress, and you have no opinion on whether climate change is happening or not? I'm I'm currently doing research. He's like Greta Thunberg. I'm in Iceland looking at glaciers. So Do you have the qualifications to know if a glacier is is showing the effects of climate change or not? I'm I'm talking to the experts on the ground right now as we speak. I actually did. I actually did this today. I can send you a picture of the glacier and I was like, yo, is this thing getting bigger or smaller? And, <laughs> and he, uh and I was like, is it what you asked you asked the expert if the glacier was getting bigger or smaller? I I actually I'll I'll, I'll send you some pictures. Um but I, I was literally like, yo, what's what's going on with it? And uh had like and how has it been affecting? Like, can, can like seriously, I was having this conversation. The guy was like, "Oh yeah, you know, the, the glacier sometimes it's bigger, sometimes it's smaller." And I'm gonna look into the actual data that he gave me. I actually have it, and we're gonna we're gonna look into it. That's interesting. Ugh. I just think I, I'm literally seeing it for myself. So. You're kind of spineless as a politician right now. You you have not what? really you haven't really dug your heels in on any issue. You the, the biggest stance he's taken is for big government and more taxes a little bit nope, ago. Nope, that's that's not what I said. Kind of. I just said we got to just take a common sense approach. You yeah, can just I don't use know. that as an answer to anything. Like, like you have, yeah, you have yet to answer any. I mean, this is, well, I mean, shit, that's, I guess that's what politicians do. They just Billy, fucking squirm out of questions. What are, what are, uh, what are your Republican constituents going to feel about the fact that you won lib of the year twice um you know i think as we know the the award is to talk about liberalism in the original sense like the founders wrote in the constitution <laughs> classical um, liberal head ass <laughs> yes <laughs> so i think i would very much describe to them how i'm a classical liberal oh my god but um wait so are you running so how's, your Republican? Golf? how's your golf Going. Are you running as a Republican? He hasn't announced Where, yet. We, I can't announce anything. The FEC, come on, just get, like cut this part. But like, I can't talk about it that much <laughs> right now. Um, it's funny because Billy did an entire episode announcing that he's running. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, then I'm, but then the last I'm not episode running. we did, I then you suspended your campaign. Yes, I Billy. suspended, suspended, and it has not been re. It hasn't suspended. been suspended. It hasn't been suspended. <laughs> oh, there's going to be some great, some great out of context clips from the Storm the Capital the board game uh, that we, yeah. that we can use. <laughs> Billy, was the 2020 election a legitimate result? Oh, good question, Big T. Mm. Guys, can we just talk about something else right now? That's, that's, a, that's, a, oh simple, that's a simple God. question for Billy. Congress. Very, very simple question, Billy. What's the question again? You know what the question is. We're even listening. I actually forgot the exact. Did you say did it? Did January sixth happen or did the election? Is this guy for real? Was the twenty twenty election a legitimate result? Um, with every election, I mean, look, with every election <laughs> across the world, there is some types of election fraud. It would actually be like, for example, Vladimir Putin it, just won a landslide. Is, is vote. any election legitimate? That's good. I mean, I mean, Vladimir Putin just won a landslide vote and he just totally rigged the election. There are like we should start talking about America is the best democracy in the world. I think we can all agree on that, right? Uh, I actually, you seem to really love Iceland, but sure. <laughs> well, I, Iceland is uh, they actually established the first parliamentary system ever, like back in the 900s. That's the what's 10th up. Century. But, but yeah, this big uh, Iceland did. No, did the I'm last just talking election about the place I am. Have. Election fraud is a legitimate result. I think it's I no no no. I mean I think you know with any like there are <laughs> small types of election fraud in any election that's ever occurred. I think that's the country is too big. There's too many instances for there to say there was zero. He like, rejects I think, the the nature of your question. So was the result yeah. legitimate? I mean I think you know. Come on, guys, just <laughs> give me a second here. 
<laughs> Aren't you supposed to be having a press conference soon? Yeah, but you know we're we're, we're prepping for that. Well, you're we doing speak. a shitty job. <laughs> we're, the thing is, at these press conferences, there aren't going to be these questions. Oh, we have I'm just running things. for Congress. I just want to help serve my country, please. <laughs> I'm running for Congress. I just want to win. Me, why are you giving me such a hard time? <laughs> why are you asking me all these questions? I didn't questions anticipate about... there being questions. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there are examples of election fraud happening in almost every These are election. like the top five questions every politician gets to, by the way. These are like not really bottom of the barrel questions. These are the ones are... we could think of off the top of our head with no prep. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's withstand it. I think there's no point looking back. We should be looking forward to new elections. That's my real answer. There's no point. Let's not talk about the past. I'm not here to talk about the past. Who said that? Yeah, exactly. On to 2024. Oh, no, it was um, Rafi Palmero, right? Mark McGuire. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the steroid hearing. The, the steroid hearing. Yeah, I'm not here to talk about the past. I'm here to talk about the future. By the way, <laughs> Sammy Sosa gave a great answer. Some reporter in Chicago found him and uh, and asked him like if he did ster steroids back when he was hitting all those dingers. And uh, Sosa just looked at him and was like, I did not expect that question from you. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So, Billy, you just do that. You just do that if any nosy reporter starts asking you questions like, do you think that Joe Biden won the 2020 election? Billy just rode rode a red wave by the way, Congress. Did you did you see uh um apparently um she popped out, Princess. She's she's out walking again. Oh she's she out. She wasn't at the parade. Yeah, she she was spotted. No pictures, but hearsay has her at a flower shop. With no pictures. There wasn't security footage. No pictures, anything. which actually is makes me like, come on, someone had to have snapped snapped a little bit of a pick or something. I mean, honestly, what was she doing at the flower shop? Um, let me get to my source. My source. Um, Kate Middleton reported spotted with Prince William. Uh, so she was seen. Uh, she apologized for her statement, but she was. Where the hell is she seen? Um, where the hell was she actually? I, I don't believe any of this. I think they might have just retracted the story because it's different from when I first pulled it up on the article. Yeah, what's Holy going on, shit. Billy? Wait a second. They changed this article since I read it and sent it to you guys. Um. Uh, so, so what happened, man? So the AP must have rescinded what they said. So they're rescinding the hearsay. Yeah, I think they did. I think you know how they rescinded the photo? Yeah. I think they rescinded the reported spotting. All right, so she still might be missing. I think... I, At this point, if she's she not... Okay, okay. Happy, relaxed, and healthy on a visit to a local farm shop with William near their home in Windsor, England on Saturday. According to the UK Sun newspaper... At okay. this point, if if she's okay, and there's been all this talk about whether or not she's still alive, and and the Photoshop thing, and all the stuff behind the scenes with the Brazilian butt lift, if she's actually okay, she she would have just put out a new picture, right? Right. That's what doesn't make sense to me. Like, why are they trying to hide it if it's because they did say she's not supposed to come out till Easter, and it's not Easter yet. So like, they have nothing to hide. Something stinks. Yeah, it's weird. I have a new I have a new um theory. Okay. That I'm pretty much latched onto at this point is that she um is playing hardball. Wait, did I say this last week? She's playing hardball and there was a separation in private because William wanted Rose Hanbury to be the queen and she was like, "You watch me leave and you watch what happens." And then see if you want me to be the, your queen still. I think that's what's going on now. Is that she's almost doing this on purpose. She's like, I'm going to make your life hell. Yeah. You're going to have to just answer questions nonstop about yep. me. Yep. And and you'll see who you want to be your queen. This rose bitch or me. I'm, I am England's I am England's princess. So I spoke to some English people uh, in Iceland. 
Globalist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they think, in their honest opinion, they think that she may have gotten a hysterectomy. That is what's going around on the ground in England. And then okay. they said, "We don't really give a ki- we don't really give a shit about the royal family. Only you Americans care." But that's what we. No, heard. that's not true. The they Brits keep, love. They love honestly, the royal family. They say that, like, oh no, only Americans care about it. But all of them say that, and I think they're deflecting. Yeah. They're deflecting. They they really fucking care, don't they? They love yeah. getting asked about it, and they love adding that in every time they talk to an American. All right, so and I'm not it, I'm not a gynecologist. Um. What? I should just preface every single episode Thank by saying that. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just I'm, not I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. I'm not a gyno. I'm just a me, guy. Could have me, man. Could have fooled if me. The, if, I do know, I know a lot about vaginas. Okay. If, uh, <laughs> if there was a hysterectomy, that points at, at something that's potentially very serious. And I think that they would, I don't know if they're like waiting to announce what the medical issue was. Um, but I also think that if you have a hysterectomy, you could probably take a picture at some point over the course of three months, right? Right. A hysterectomy doesn't have you down and out for three months. No, it doesn't. Or like, you why didn't they use like a baby photo? Like happy mother, because that photo they posted yeah. that was like mm-hmm. edited was like Mother's Day. It could have been like from years ago and nobody would have questioned to like, right. it just, it's just a throwback, right. like whatever. I, you, something stinks to high heavens up in here. Do you think they're trying to make themselves relevant again, the royal family? So they're like pulling pranks? No, never complain and never explain. This is not... This what? is not the way of of the of the royal house. I also saw something <laughs> to go along mm-hmm. with Madeline's theory of her like hardballing is that maybe um, Charles passed away, and that's why she's hardballing because she's now in line to be the queen. But we saw him over the weekend. Him Did and we? him oh, and Queen okay, okay. Queen bitch ass Camilla. Camilla, yeah. Well, there, there was okay, a. I there was a story that he'll, I mean, he'll be he won't make it much. The Russian media said that King Charles was dead. Yeah. Well, are we trusting the Russian media now? No, they um they <laughs> disputed that. Yeah. No, I, they're not going to have all of this hullabaloo go on if the king is dead. Like, yeah, there's a there's a process there. Like, remember when right. when Queen Elizabeth died, like there is a process that is set in place. For when things like that happen, it's not like let's cause an actual PR nightmare. Yeah. So even if she had a Brazilian butt lift, I would imagine that she could still get a picture taken unless there were like severe complications, right? Right. Well, it, as long as you catch her standing, you just can't sit. Is so that true? I just, if you, you get can't a, if sit. you get a BBL, you can't sit. Not yeah, dude. Like there's months. all these pictures of women yeah. coming back from Colombia or Mexico, and they're all Brazil. sitting <laughs> on their knees. Uh, with, yeah. with with their hinds up, like flying back. <laughs> their hinds. Have you specifically <laughs> sought this out? Really? Why do you? No, no, because who's? No, no. It was like it was like a meme. It went around where they yeah. were. They're in like they couldn't sit down. Oh, right. In most cases, you will be able to sit down after two to three weeks. Still, many surgeons agree that waiting at least four weeks is better. So you can't sit on your ass for like a month. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awful. That sucks. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was from TikTok. There was a, a plane full of post-op BBL patients, and they're all like on their knees, like facing their chair. Which we learned actually that if if a plane was designed correctly, all the seats would be facing backwards mm-hmm. in a plane, and they have some extra cushion. It's much safer that most way. Most trans women do. I'm gonna tread lightly here, but most trans women do that are high key trying to you know impress other women because. Men don't really like none of that shit. Are kind of trash, bro. Like that shit, <laughs> whack. There was one. Oh, did you know the caterpillar shit that women be doing with their eyes? Where it's like wax or yeah. whatever. It's yeah. like they they like spread them out. They like comb them upwards. Yeah, with that's horrible, dog. That shit is some of the worst shit I've ever. Seen. I don't understand that shit. Like, that, like there's a lot of trends women do for each other that men ain't really feeling like that. Well, I. I guess. I'm not. I can't speak for all dudes. I, I agree with you, Aaron. I agree with you on the eyebrows and um like the lip fillers have gotten out of control. Dog shit. Out of control. Like if you get a normal lip filler, I, I think that a lot of women do that and you can't really tell. They just have nice lips. But there's just there's a, a trend where they just get the biggest lips that they can find. I don't like it. I, I don't like that. I don't like the caterpillar things. I don't like um actually this might be I might be 
I'm going to tread lightly as well because, uh, Aaron, maybe you can just you can send me back to like white boy detention for this. But um, the uh, the is it edging the edges on the front of a hair of your hair oh, no, like no, your no, hairline? That's, that's, that's kind of fly. Yeah, but when it fly. but you it's know, gotten when crazy down, now when they lay but, them down. But it's gotten crazy now. Like it's it's that's, that might be a culture thing. You like that know. might be a culture thing. Yeah, culture not thing. not I for me. I don't know what you're talking about. But are are you? But let me interject. You don't like edging. You don't like. When women edge PFT? I don't like when women edge me, no. Okay. Is, what is that? Can you explain for those who don't know. I'm talking about the hair thing. When you comb down the, the front of the hair and you do very intricate designs on the forehead around the hairline. Um, some of it's fine, in my in my personal opinion. Some of it has gotten just crazy where it looks like, like they've got hairy forehead. I like that. I like the edge. The edge can get kind of, that's, that's kind of fly. I like that shit. Okay. But I mean, to your point, I, I, I just, like a lot of them shit. They don't be, they don't do it for us. You know what I'm saying? They don't do it for yeah. dudes. They do it to. It's like they were trying to one up each other, like with whatever. And I don't really understand fashion in general, man. I'm kind of a square when it comes to like clothes and shit. I'm, I'm not good with that shit. So like, I guess Baggy's back in right now, right? Yep. Like Baggy made his way back in, and that was some of the worst, the '90s and the early 2000s was some of the worst fashion in the world has ever saw and they're bringing that shit back so shout out Everything to y'all everything that's like old is new room. again yeah, yeah Jinkos are coming back I'm very excited about that one. Oh, yeah. bell bottoms is making their way back too bell cargo pants I've been rocking them the whole time but now people think they're cool yeah my, Billy's culture is not your costume yeah like I'm wearing <laughs> I'm wearing some sick Duluth <laughs> trading cargo pants but people think like I'm I'm like trying to be a skater and i'm like no i just have a bunch of stuff in my pockets <laughs> and it's it's weird because like <laughs> like I, I got like someone took my carhartt coat at a bar the other day that i was rocking and i was like yo dude why are you taking my coat like who would take my carhartt coat and like some dude was like yo carhartt's in right now and i'm like Dude, I bought that at Walmart in college because it gets to like negative twenty degrees with wind chill at my college. Like what? Like mm -hmm. it's weird, dude. It's fact, getting did we weird. fact check that? <laughs> exactly. I think That's we what I'm have saying. Already. Yeah. <laughs> negative twenty. Wind chill with <laughs> with wind chill with yeah. wind chill <laughs> with wind chill. The one um, place that, that that the baggy trend is not coming back though. The opposite's been happening. Uh, basketball shorts. Yeah, they're no, getting, no one wears baggy no, no. shorts anymore playing ball. And there was a clip that came out of uh, C.J. McCollum when he was playing against Duke. What year was that? Was that 2010? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I guess 14 years ago. But um, the Lehigh team at that point, they had the baggiest shorts ever. And you're like, how did they play with these? And now everyone's wearing like almost skin tight. 2012. Like, Who was the guy from St. Bonaventure Ooh. before that? Like 05, 06 maybe. You'll you'll know the picture when I show it to you. Hang on. My favorite my favorite dudes in March Madness are always the baggy t shirt guys. I love the big t shirt dudes. And there have been some absolute legends of the game in the big t shirt department. You remember this guy? Marcus Green? Yeah, yeah. That it's that's the uh, meme. Yeah. Yeah. It it seemed to me like even at the time, like these shorts are so big that they affect how you dribble. Like they must affect your jumping too. How could you do like a between the legs with those? You have to be better. You have to have better handles. See, I don't care about them being baggy, but I like my shorts a little longer. And now, I mean, you can't find those. No, you got to show a little thigh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so now, but now you got all those, like all the basketball kids when I went to college would all have thigh tattoos. And I was kind of like, yo, that's kind of weird, dude. And they'd, they'd have like, like thigh tattoos, like halfway up their thigh so that when they'd wear their shorts real short, they would have like it on their thigh that you could see. And I was kind of like <laughs> you trying to get people to look at your thighs. Yeah. What's up with that? Any, any just, guy that has a thigh <laughs> tattoo weird. Just, um, just, that was a little, yeah, it's a little, no, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's also a rugby thing. Like a lot of rugby players have yeah. thigh tattoos. I'm just kind of like, I was like kind like, of almost like a tramp. Females, female, females, uh, were, were more heavy on the thigh tats than dudes. Back in my day, I don't know what's going on nowadays, but you know, back back in my day, it was a it was a female thing. Yeah, now now there's just straight up dudes getting thigh tattoos. I mean, I maybe four, I'm getting man. older. Maybe I'm getting older. You're definitely getting older. <laughs> mm -hmm. Older, wiser, more presidential. <laughs> 
Aaron, I said at the start of the episode you weren't here for it, but if Billy one day becomes president because of this, I'm going to end it. <laughs> that would, I mean, hell no. That's just mean, dude. What are you like, saying? What if you need me to pardon you for something? I'm not going oh, yeah. to jail, brother. I follow the law. I'm, I'm afraid of prison. <laughs> I'm afraid of prison. I'm afraid of jail. I follow the law, family. Actually, yeah, Billy, if you become president one day, can you pardon me for setting you on a course of events that led to you becoming president? I'll pardon you. Okay. All right, but I'll you. have to pardon you anyway because you would have committed a crime, apparently, from what you're doing. No, no, it's a preemptive pardon. No. We'll work it out. We'll talk later. Um, actually, I don't. I rescind that because I don't think you can actually say that conditionally before getting elected. So I rescind that. That was parody <laughs> law. It. That was a joke. Billy's running for president already. <laughs> I rescind that. Well, that's uh, the good thing about Trump. If there is any positives, uh, no, nothing anybody has done or said will ever make them exempt from being a president ever again. Yeah. Yes. He has lowered the bar for standards. Like nobody cares anymore. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, Billy, will will you, will you be endorsing Donald Trump for president? I mean, oh, look, this is big, actually. Politicians in general have really been getting away with a lot recently, and it just goes to show that we need to get better people in Congress. Um, but in other news, uh, he can't pay <laughs> his indictment um, money. Uh, he's being he's he can't pay the. Uh, what's he, he, the exact thing is, so the $454 million he owes, uh, his lawyer says he can't pay it. I thought his lawyer said that he shouldn't be required to pay like a certain percent of it because he's so good for the money. Um, it it specifically has to do, it specifically has to do with his, uh, in order to, um, appeal. Yeah. So Trump can't secure. Can't secure 454 million appeal bonds. So when he appeals, he still has to pay money. Yeah. So I don't think it's 454 million, um, but yeah, he'd have to pay 112 k a day um, in the exact. I, I thought yeah, that he, he, I thought he was saying that he didn't have to pay that bond because he's famously known as being one of the richest people in America. So the bond he shouldn't have to prove and put any money down because he's good for it. Yeah, so he can't. He, he's refusing to pay the eighteen million dollars up front and a two percent annual bond premium. So, um, if, if Trump, let's say, how much does he owe? Let's just put a number out there. Let's just say five hundred million dollars. Well, he he owes ninety one point six million to Gene Carroll. Okay, let's just say let's just say a hundred. If if Trump owed a hundred million dollars, and then he told uh-huh. people, um, "I need your help, America." And he did go fund me. Do you think Trump could raise a hundred million dollars no, to pay legal bills? Easy, a hundred million. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's what was that man. wall? They 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 made a bunch for the wall. Oh yeah, the go fund me oh, to build yeah. the wall. He didn't and even then, ask, but they they did it. How, what did it get to? Did that money go to a Trump super PAC? I'm pretty sure that somebody got indicted for what they did with wall money. Let's see. Let's figure out some Trump sort of embezzlement, I think, because it wasn't actually connected with Trump. It was like a supporter, right? That started well, that it. Made, yeah, it, was, it, was, it made over twenty five million dog. Damn. OK, so this guy doesn't have legs. Um, oh, my God. Wait, like literally. Like Lieutenant Dan. OK, or? so. Yeah, <laughs> no, I Lieutenant Dan ice cream. OK, so. I you got was reading legs. that. I, I was reading that and thinking that he was like it. It was like, oh, he has no legs to stand on because he's saying, but he actually does not have legs. Uh, he's a, he's an Air Force veteran who fundraised tens of millions oh, from MAGA funny. heads in the name of building Trump's border wall. Admitted Thursday to pocketing hundreds of thousands of dollars that were donated to his bogus efforts. Um, yeah, so yeah, he pocketed a lot of it. Um, he denied the charges, accusing prosecutors of targeting him because he posed a major threat to the globalist agenda to have mass migration into the U.S., uh, but on Thursday acknowledged stealing 35 – oh, he, he stole 3,500,000 $3, of the 25 million. 3,500,000. So, not that much of a crook. Just a so, little. That's, I mean, that, I that thought – 3.5 million? 
Throw, Say I'm again? just trying to do Billy math. Thirty five hundred thousand. That's that, three point five million. Thirty five hundred. Ah, oh, wait, no, never mind. It is it's three thousand three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh, that's not much. That that's not much. It's a yeah. finder's fee. Yeah. Uh, when the zeros get that big, it, it gets confusing. Do you think that um if you if you like lose your legs and you're a real big sneaker head, do you think you still buy shoes just because you like shoes? I mean, well, most people this that guy collect is... them that much don't really wear them, right? Yeah, I think that you I think you might. I think that there's Probably you probably just like having cool shoes around. Something to think about. I mean, it depends on. So this guy is wearing shoes at a Mar-a-Lago event in 2019. Oh, because he's got prosthetics. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, hey, probably sell the shoes. I would honestly just get super cool robot legs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just like pimp them out, make them cool. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure any robot leg is pretty cool. Yeah, like uh, I'd spend the money not on expensive shoes, but on expensive legs, if I could. But they're probably super expensive. So, but honestly, I hope this never happens. And uh, shout out to anyone who's lost limbs. Yeah, um, Billy is so presidential right now. It's wild. Shout out to anybody who's lost limbs. I just want to keep asking Billy hard questions. Billy, where do you he stand never... on where do you stand on uh, Israel Hamas? Oh, look, there is a you know, outside of America's borders, there are tons of serious uh, issues occurring, conflicts, um, and pain and suffering. But what we got to remember is is that, and I mean, my heart goes out to the people of Palestine and the people of Israel. Um, but we have a serious issue at the southern border, uh, and a lot of those issues from outside the border are coming in. And uh, we need to figure out a, a common sense solution to make sure that we keep America safe. Um, Israel is uh, America's number one ally in the Middle East. Um, but a lot of Democrats are seemingly calling for a ceasefire. Do you agree with that? Um, honestly, when I get into Congress, hopefully, I hope to serve on the National Security and uh, Foreign Relations Committee. Um, we can tackle these issues uh, as a bipartisan group. Do you get to just um, this is you the know, um, do you the, get do you get to say which committee you want to be on? Like, yeah, you, get you dibs? do. You get to be like, I want to be on this committee, this committee, and you can just join them too. There's no <laughs> <laughs> they let you do it. You, you can just do it. <laughs> No, you say which ones you want to join, and then once you get elected, you can just join them. They can't be like, no, you can't join. You I can join any committee. I don't think that's accurate. I think you have to no. be like put up for it's, it and then approved. Except for the uh, uh, – there's one committee you can't, which is like the appropriations committee. Oh, the money. Yeah. The yeah, money guys. That's what you can't join. Um. So – Um. Each party assigns by resolution its own members to committees, and each committee distributes its members along some subcommittees. So, I don't know. You have know. to be put up for it. You don't get to no, just choose. No, no. Um, it's. I'm it's sure you can make suggestions. It's a lot, it's a lot simpler like. than that. Billy, where do you stand on gun control? Um. Come, come on, guys. I, I see, like... <laughs> I'm asking you what as do you a mean, person. Come on, the amendment's very clear. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Uh, yeah, it actually isn't. I disagree. You think it's clear? I think it's very clear. Read it. Shall not be infringed. No, read the whole thing. The You're referring to the the d dependent clause, the keeping of a militia necessary to the security. That's why it's state. not very clear. <laughs> the right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. Not clear. Um, so yeah, uh, it's getting pretty late here. Um, I gotta go brush up on some stuff. Great talking to you guys. Great talking to you too, Billy. So how long is it going to be like this? Uh, I think forever. I think this is just Billy. <laughs> just doesn't have any more opinion. Well, he said in his PowerPoint, like, I have zero ideology. <laughs> he promised zero this to, to us. Any, ide any that, ideology. Listen, uh, that's better than some. I am for sale. 
<laughs> Billy football. No, I said I, I, I'm not going to just blindly choose things because it's on one side of the spectrum. Common sense. I'm, I'm looking forward to more of this. I don't I mean, think you, you, you haven't chose anything. It sounds like you're just middle of the road on everything. It's, no, to be honest, I need to like meet with some people and just like craft out serious points. So you that need I, them I can... to tell you what you think. No, no. I just need to carefully craft exactly what I'm trying to convey in my message, which I think is fair. Like, look, this is a huge undertaking um, and we're going to get the best people. And uh, we're really going to do this thing right. And it's going to be. We're going to get the best people. I'm just saying we're going to do it right. It's We're going to be an open book. Everything's going to be done by the book. We're currently figuring out stuff. There's um, currently nothing in the book. <laughs> open there's, book. Right, the book but, is open, but there's nothing on the pages yet. <laughs> we're, we're writing the pages. So we're going to convey. I. I <laughs> Come on, guys. Can, can, can we just be supportive here? This is this is a nerve-wracking uh, venture I'm going on, and it's hopefully for the best of the country. And I don't I necessarily that... say, I can't, you can't just ask me to support you because you're a friend. I don't agree with your policy. <laughs> I know. But once you're you see. See. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, it's just... Uh, well, we can... don't know if we agree with this policy, Jake. <laughs> we don't know they are. Just, just wait, wait till no my policy plans come out. There's just... This Just is the scene from here. the office when they're interviewing guys to replace Michael, and the one guy goes, "I have a great plan." They're like, "Can we hear part of the plan?" He's like, "Well, I can't give you the plan until you hire me." Yeah, they're like, "Well, just give us like a bit of plans." Like, I can't give you the plan yet. <laughs> exactly. There might be people out there listening that will take Billy's right. plan and then run for office and then beat Billy with Come his on, own guys. plan. It's true. We're we're liquidating savings, and uh, we're we're gonna get it right. We're gonna get it right, and we're gonna go like literally the Jose Canseco money is going to the. Bill Cotter for Congress campaign. So let's see how this goes. Bill Cotter, I beat up Jose Canseco one time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, breaking cool, news. Though. It looks like LeBron is starting a podcast. Mm -hmm. I thought he had one program. with JJ Reddick. With the, um, uh, I thought he had one with the, with Uninterrupted, the, the shop. Isn't yeah, the shop. Yeah, it's yeah. another one. Is that a podcast or a TV show? I don't know, but this is a podcast. I don't know the difference anymore because every podcast has yeah. video. So, yeah. Is the shop offered as a podcast? Who's he doing it with? JJ. Okay. JJ Reddick. It's going to be presented by 342 Pro and Uninterrupted. There's also another bombshell podcast that is reportedly getting dropped. The Lou Holtz podcast. We talked about that. Yeah. There's also another one. It's getting dropped? That is starting. Oh, so yeah, okay. Reportedly, is Lamar Odom and Caitlyn Jenner. Oh wow! Oh, oh wow! Keeping They're, up oh with sports God. is what it's called. They're gonna fuck. <laughs> I mean, the sexual tension on that show. Caitlyn be... <laughs> Jenner. Who's who's this? Uh, um, formerly known. Wait, as... are you serious? You don't know who Caitlyn Jenner wait? is? We talked about oh, her like, oh, last oh, episode. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Like, see, fuck, I, I always get that. That's the um. Decathlon. Transgender. Transgender. That was like a uh, a Jeff Epstein? <laughs> <laughs> the financier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty gotcha. sure if something happened with Bruce Jenner, Arium would have heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we're in the golden age of podcasts right now, guys. Get, it, get in while it's hot. Get in while it's hot. You know, one thing they don't have, though, is somebody that's running for Congress on a, the mm -hmm. most nebulous platform possible. It's just, we're sharpening our blade, so. <laughs> oh, careful. Careful. What? Yeah, it's a, it's a, quite a metaphor. You know, just just wait till we got it, like... <laughs> I shouldn't even be doing this podcast the, right now. I should be the only shit stance order. you took today was <laughs> more taxes and more government. I oh no, and also trying to get deers uh, considered to be pest species so that they can be exterminated on site. More taxes, kill the deer. Bill Cotter for Congress. Billy did ask me on on Thursday of last week if he would be fired if he ran for Congress. I was like, Billy, we talked about. Like this was our idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, a lot of people when they like consider running for Congress, the one reason they don't is that they can't keep their job if they lose if they're dedicating so much time to the campaign trail. I was just yeah. basically be like, hey. So are you saying your allegiance is to this podcast, not to the people of New York? 
No, I'm not saying that, Big T. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. No, I'm saying You'd that rather I'm have gonna... this job. If, if, if I win, if, if I go choose. to Congress, I'm going to have to quit this podcast or just when what? I'll Wait, pop what? in now and then. Do, we, do any, um, any Congress people have podcasts? Oh, I don't know. Sure. Let's check that out. There's got to be. You could be the first. Also, that, that might put Billy over the top amongst Long Island voters. If I get elected, I will quit macrodosing. <laughs> oh, run the numbers up, baby. You might pull this thing out, Billy. <laughs> Nice. Good morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are several you laugh podcasts. Now. You laugh now. <laughs> I know. No, I trust me. I I have walked myself through the the path of Billy becoming like a a, a lifelong politician, and it's not. It might seem it might seem dumb, but people have gotten into politics and had long careers based off stupider things. So. And you just look like a politician too. I just honestly, I just want to. I just I want to kill the deers. I just want to <laughs> do what's right and like you know. I think basically we'll see what we'll see what happens. There you know, are like, nine GOP congressmen with podcasts. You would. I crack never said I wanted digits. to be the first. I didn't say I want to be the first congressman with a podcast. Let's just focus on you. Yeah, no, that's fair. You would be the first podcaster congressman. Let's just, you know, we got to get You'd the signatures. Uh, if you're yeah. in District 3 in Long Island, uh, no, I can't say this yet. On Long Island. In the district on Long Island. Okay, there. So. In Long Island. Yeah, I don't know. I think you could be in an island too. So, yeah, I was just fixing to say I've had a problem with this for a long time. <laughs> Because Long Island is the only island where people say on. Nobody says I'm on Hawaii. No, no, no. But that is why. That is why. Three. Because Long mean? Island is Long Island is different than any. It's a very unique uh, construct. Island. It's it's a it's honestly a, <laughs> Long Island. So it's much. interesting. It's it's <laughs> it sounds like New York. Amazing. Canada, it's his honestly. favorite island. No, it's it's, it's, yeah, what's, <laughs> it's what's my, unique about island. It? It's my it's it's an amazing concept. It's my it island. Really, it what really, is the concept? It's one of the greatest <laughs> suburban, uh, probably island? utopias in the country. <laughs> what? Like it is like Billy think is the about it. Of Utopia. <laughs> Holy shit, it's, man. It's amazing. I mean, like, think about it. It's made its own culture. Voice pitch up right New there. York Long Island, Long Island has its own sports tournament opposed to New York State. Tournament. So they play they play their own sports. They have their own leagues and everything on Long Island. So it makes and it utopia, it's like it's baby. We, utopia? I, what? what do you Long mean they Island should secede? Long Island should secede from New York. What do you, <laughs> what do you mean they play their That's own sports? What you... <laughs> so in New York State, like for example, if you're playing football, you'll go to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse to play your championship. Except if you're from Long Island, you play in your own championship, I think, uh, in – I don't know. Is that a Hofstra? I, That's what makes it utopia. It's it's its, its own. Sports. It's its own amazing, self sufficient community. Are you from there, Bunny Chan? Yes. Is every <laughs> community not a self sufficient? Yeah, I'm community? confused I, by that. Long Island is a many different communities into one. Do you know how many people live in Long Island? A lot. I think there's more what people there? in Long Island than there is in places. upstate. I think there's more people in Long on Long Island than there are in upstate New York. So, um, Billy there's Joel, you're a big point... Billy Joel fan. Yeah, dude, I've always loved Billy Joel. Even the DUIs. From an Italian restaurant. Yeah, Honestly, I might run on to try to fix a lot of the problems we see in uh, Captain Jack, uh, the song, which I think you know is hugely impacting Long Island. Uh, going home and masturbating. Uh, you're. Taking the shallow interpretation of the song. That's a lyric from Captain Jack. Um, you just sit at home and masturbate. It's a line. Are you pro sitting at home and masturbating, Billy? So there is more people in. Okay, according to the 2010 census. Okay, that's not. The population doesn't matter. Yes, so the upstate population is nine hundred thousand less than Long Island. I, I like that though that you are uh you're in favor of Long Island seceding from the state of New York. <laughs> that was a joke parody. That was a joke I, parody. 
<laughs> I think people would like that. Joe I think the people of Long Island would appreciate that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think if you want to win, Billy, you got to start being just... an extremist. You just got to be an extremist. <laughs> no, you have to. Like, you can't. You can't ride the fence as a politician nowadays. You gotta Dude. like, you gotta stand for something, and, and you don't matter how fucking crazy it is, fam. It doesn't. We, I, honestly, just, you believe some crazy shit, just stand on it enough to get attention, and motherfuckers will vote for you. That's how it works nowadays. It'd be crazy. It'd be you. I'm rooting I, for you, man. We're 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 gonna we're gonna do that. We just need to. We can't have any clips hone. coming out right now. On you gotta, that you got you got to hone in on on your craziness, on your message. Yeah, just. <laughs> We're we're gonna get there. We do have some breaking news though. Um, Obama is at Downing Street in London right yeah, now. Yeah, I did see that. He's he's getting to the bottom of the bottom of the Kate Middleton stuff. Good for him. Yeah, Michelle was probably like, "Brock, can you just find Figure out what's going on? Like, I want to know." Mm -hmm. like, oh, sure. Yep, Michelle. Let's be clear. It's not a bad. It's not a bad Obama right there. Let's let's be clear. Uh, her her butt's a lot bigger. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> She's done this years ago. This gets my stamp of approval. Yeah. <laughs> easy, Mr. Easy, Mr. Carter. <laughs> uh, did Obama really just... <laughs> that would be hilarious if he just went over to the United Kingdom to uh, give his stamp of approval on uh, a recent cosmetic think, surgery. Listen, look, I think that's a fine ass. American people <laughs> need to know... Uh, uh, what's that butt doing? Show me them hams. <laughs> oh boy uh all right anything else we want to get into um covered a wide range of topics today um i saw dune 2 last night and i loved it so much that's all i needed to say i uh did it somehow explain what was going on in dune one because yes. i watched that shit and i oh. still didn't know what the fuck that movie was about yo arian this movie you need to see this movie arian like you you would this is what movie theaters are made for Ooh, this is why we that, have cinema though. wow this is why we have you sound like nicole kidman oh we come to this we come place. to this place for magic and that's <laughs> what we got last night at the regal cinemas oh me oh my <laughs> so wait is what is dune based on and i don't even remember dune one coming out okay well okay dune when is, did dune one come out fall of 2021 are they like trying to like make this like the next Star Wars type thing? Well, Star Wars was based on Dune. Fun fact. Fun fact. Lisan Al Gaib. Um, what but is that? That's that's it's part of the movie. Lisan Al Gaib. Oh, Wait, really quickly. You said that really shit. quickly. Oh, that sounded amazing. I just didn't Thank know what it was. Really, really quickly. More from what you. I've heard is. And we might oh, need to shit about to be. It's shit about to be gold. Whatever. Whenever he says, "From mm -hmm. what I've heard," let's get it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Is there space Muslims in Dune? Okay. Space <laughs> Muslims. The campaign is off to a great start. <laughs> it's a, it's I'm a just saying, community. they what? use terms like... Why would you say something they, like that? They use terms like jihad. The names yeah. are sounding kind of uh, Arabic. Like, is it like... It has what? Middle Eastern influence for sure. But like, do they? Does it exist in the? It's it's a fair point. Like they space use a lot of the terms. Um, space space Muslims. I'm not gonna. I'm just, not gonna even go down what Billy just said. I, why so unfair about saying that? They're they're literally using like like just, Arabic names. They use the word jihad. Muslims and there's space Muslims. It's a sequel <laughs> like, to uh, to the Dave Chappelle joke. Is it in space or is it on planet Earth? Just no, in the it's, future. It's in space. In in twenty thousand years, but so, is it really Earth? No, it's not Earth. It's in there. It's no. In, Earth is so there are thing. Middle Eastern like they use the term jihad. There's al like they're using there the are, al prefix, which is Arabian. There are Middle Eastern influences. Yes, I am not going to go far as space Muslims. Well, but, I'm just wondering. It's in space, and they're using they are Muslim Muslims, terminology. Therefore, so, space Muslim. I don't know. You can ask. Uh, that's the, everyone's obsessed with this. I'm like, th that was my thought. Like, is it? Are they like basically making a movie about Muslims in space? It's about like, it's about religious Muslim, war. It's about Muslims religious warfare. This guy wouldn't answer a question for an hour and a half. 
and he's uh, gr- he's space grilling muscles. her on are there space <laughs> yeah. and like she's like I, I don't really know it's like it's like a movie about space like but like Maddie, I needed. Are there space Muslims? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna say no then, because they're not. I Muslims. just no, no. The reason I ask is because it, it would be very like risque for them to like portray risque. Islam in a, fish, in a fictional setting, and because that's what it sounds like if, I'm from just someone gonna, who's not seen it. Billy, Why I'm just that, gonna go and say that. Do you there agree are with that Eastern being problematic, uh, Billy? No, it would be problematic from like a Charlie Hebdo stance. Would it be problematic? Do you view it as problematic? No, I mean, I just think it's a little insensitive if they make up like space Muslim movie, like to space like... Muslim. Well, it's based off of a book from forty years ago, but okay, so it's... probably. I don't know, Bill, if they're necessarily space Muslims, but they come from a lot of Middle Eastern influence, and but it's not on Earth; it's in space on planets that don't exist. Um, okay, okay, that's that's all I was wondering. Yep, but. It is Aryan. Like I think you, if you like Avatar, I really think you could get in on this. And I'm in. Any, I, I saw the first one and like I wanted to like it. I just didn't know what was going on. I had no. So it's one of those movies where I had no. It the like, first movie was a lot of story building. Right, and the I figured second that, movie that's why I, is yeah, a I lot fi- of payoff. Yeah, and then that's what I figured because when like I had no like. I went in. Have you ever like saw a movie and were like, I don't know what this is about. Haven't even seen a preview, but I'm just gonna go watch it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what happened with Dune. And, and usually that that's a really good palate cleanser for like movie watching because you have no idea what to expect. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, this has the the foundation to be a dope ass movie, but it's just like nothing's happening. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And I guess if you have read the book, if you understand the storyline, I yeah, it was like building up to this part, which I yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm I'll run it back. I'll, so I'll, the I'll, first and second movie encapsulate the first book of this series so the first movie was the first half of the book this one that i just saw was the second half basically all the action wait how many books are there oh there are like there's like six books but then it's the whole thing is that frank herbert who wrote the dune books his son took over the after he i believe after he died his son took over writing and kind of went ape shit with it and okay. like kind of went crazy. So the first three books are really the bread and butter of the franchise. So are there going to be six movies? I don't think every movie after that is going to be two. So I think it's going to be, there's one and two. And then I think there's three, which will come out in a couple years. And then I think after that, it's a kind of who knows of where they take the franchise after. I think if they wanted to, there's enough content where it could be a Star Wars, where it could be nine movies and there's series and there's series and there's constantly new, uh, you know, franchises about it. I don't know what they'll do with that in the future, but Dune 2 is as an insane cinema experience as I think you can have. And I know people. it came out two weeks ago and I know I'm late to this party, Um. I think all of you guys would be fully obsessed with it. And it's so great because it's one of those franchises and one of those movies where there's so much world building around it. And you could go home and read articles. I watched so many YouTube videos about it already, about what does this mean in this? What would this lead to? There's so much world building around it. And you can't get every single thing from a two and a half hour movie. So that's why I loved The Last of Us so much too, because there was so many details and so much story around it that you can really just wrap yourself into it um and every single person in this movie is just absolutely mind-blowing in their performance the the it's a beautiful movie to look at like it's gorgeous the cinematography is gorgeous um a lot of pretty people in the movie florence Pugh, zendaya timothy chalamet austin butler who is not pretty in the movie but um it is it is cinema. It is what people make movies for. Okay. It is so great. Lisan Al Gaib. Um he is the one as it is written. It is it is amazing. And I really think all of you guys and the people listening, if you haven't seen it yet somehow, should go see it. I it is worth you, it. You, no, yeah, you, I say you have given this zero cheeks. This is a, I am I am such a dune head I love like this stuff is I'm not a sci-fi girl either like I don't care about Star Wars or anything like that like 
But some movies like this, like, or series like The Last of Us, like, some of them just get me and I become addicted to the lore of the story. I want to see Dune 2 without seeing Dune 1. Um, yeah, you could watch a, what a evil thing to do. You could yeah. watch PFT. <laughs> I think you could watch like a couple recaps and get it. Okay. I'm, yeah, I, I do, do one as long and it's it it, it you, nothing's happening. You, you got to lock in for Dune 2. It's a long movie. The last the last hour of that movie Several times I caught myself with my jaw fully open for more than 30 seconds. Like, I was in shock at what they were doing in this movie. It you so have took the throne of anybody I've ever came across advocating for a movie. It is in, so in good. my more life. More than Ready Player I One. I was just telling y'all it was a good movie. God no, damn it. You loved it. You, Did you Mad right. Dog you just bring right. back the theater? Right. I think I brought, and I, I'm going to say brought something. brought back that, the box office? I'm going to say something. I am not a huge proponent of movie theaters. I get scared in them very easily. Okay. Um, of I, what? Um, Other well, people. to be honest, no. I always think I'm going to go to a movie theater and get shot. Bro, same, have, same, dude. This same. Is, this is like I, when people walk in late to the movie. Oh, I, it's I'm over like, for well, me. what are you doing, bro? Why are you looking so sus right now? Just go I, sit down. And I always people, seem people be looking for seats and they just kind of roam in the aisles. I'm like, bro, sit down fast, dog. Yeah. I, I sometimes bring a weapon to the movies. I do. It is what it is. I, I get really, really scared going to movie theaters. Um, I pretty much always think that I'm going to get shot in a movie theater, which, I need to deal with on my own. That's not against movie theaters, but um, so I'm not the one who like Gooch who does the dozen and is one of my close friends. He is one of the AMC like members where he goes like four times a week. I would have tremendous anxiety doing that. Um, you got to see this in a movie theater. It's it's it is genuinely what cinema is made for. And like, how Oppenheimer like won so many awards this year. This will be the Oppenheimer of next year for like award season. This will this will win everything. Timothy Chalamet Oscars twenty twenty five lead actor incoming. Dune two best picture incoming. Like, oh my god. I love that you had your mind blown by this. Somehow heartbreak feels good in a, in a place, place like, like this. this. Oh my god! And it's our like, heroes feel like the best part of us. Oh my god! And gosh. stories feel perfect and powerful because here they are. Nicole Kidman was talking about Dune <laughs> Two when she, she when she made that monologue. What's it, the best movie so you guys ever have? You guys ever experienced a movie that made you feel like this? Avatar. Yeah. Yeah. Forrest Gump. I mean, really? my favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption, but after I watch a movie, I was like, that was really good. Fun fact about Shawshank. <laughs> Filmed in Ohio. That's Yeah, he took my fun fact. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean it. No, that was my fun fact. That's the least fun fact oh. ever. <laughs> 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 Did you know it was filmed in Ohio? You couldn't have a worse fun fact, a less fun fact. That's just that. a fact. <laughs> it's not, yeah, I guess Nothing it, fun about I it. I guess it's just a thing. It's fun for me. Um, there's two women in Shawshank in the entire movie. I think only one speaking line. Dudes rock. It one happens, gets killed, right? It happens at the very, very end. No, no. I don't think that uh, that Tim Robbins' wife, I don't think she was ever on screen. So it's, hang on. So it's. Wait. Hang on. Two women. Who are the two women? Isn't it? Isn't it? No, there was, there's, there's clearly one at the beginning when he. Yeah. When he when shoots he, the yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. no, he doesn't. His wife. His wife. Yeah. I think her you screen see, is at the very end. Who's at the end? Wait, you can see. Because it's when he goes to Mexico. She might, she might be, yeah. Te, she wa, might have... te Watanehu. Is that it? Zu Watanehu? Yeah, something like I that. I thought it was Te Watanehu or whatever. I thought it was What Sam a great Watanehu. fucking movie. You know, his wife might have been in the beginning. So my, my fun fact might have been I, just I think a little it, bit Yeah, off. I definitely remember his wife being in the beginning. Oh, okay, the, so three. The, is the teller at the bank a woman? Yes, that's one of them. And then- There's three. Three women. Does he is the when he buys a ticket for the bus? Is she a woman? Nope. There's not a woman on the bus because he, he walks on the. Well, no, I was saying when he bought the ticket. Oh like the, yeah. The person at the counter. I guess I can't count extras. Right, you're saying like has speaking a part. lines or uh, not not this. 
I think I don't think the teller has a line, does she? I think he says she says like uh thanks for, you know, your business or whatever cuz he closes the account. Okay. And takes all the money out. The other That's facts. The other woman has a speaking line. Uh, Is there like a nurse at the prison? Nope. I can't think of the other one. The lady in the grocery store, the old lady that yells at him for bagging the groceries. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, said, uh, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's the guy's name? Don't say his name. Um, Big Red. Is it Red? Red. Red. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, Red. yeah. Because that's Morgan Freeman. I was thinking of because the other guy works at the same grocery store. Yeah. What was his name? Oh, he was a librarian. Himself. Brooks. Brooks. Brooks was here. Yeah, Brooks was here. R.I.P. to was a real here. one. R. So R. was Brooks, Red. Man. Yep. The whirlwind got itself in a big damn hurry. Yep. Remember when Brett Favre <laughs> almost went to prison? World yeah. Went Would you got pardon Brett Favre? In a big goddamn hurry. What a I, I mean, I'm just saying yeah. that he should, if he went to prison, he should have been able to like play for his freedom in a longest yard situation and like go create a team, try to beat the guards. That would have been sick. Campaign I off think, to a shitty start. <laughs> what? Having Brett Favre do a real life longest yard? Yeah, people I wouldn't watch dumb that. Dumb fucking idea after ripping people off of welfare, Billy. Well, I think we kind of figured out that was he innocent or guilty? What, what did we? I don't know. But <laughs> figured something case, out about him. <laughs> I think. Don't fucking play your way to freedom, bro. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, Brett Favre in a longest yard situation would be hilarious. I would watch. I would definitely watch. I don't know if like play your way to freedom is is the right way to go about it. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but. Uh, that'd be cool. I would watch the game. Yeah. He didn't. Wasn't he used government funds to help build a volleyball arena? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And people were like, he stole. Oh no! Wealth, There's wealth a woman money, yeah. in the the the, the landladies that unlocked the door of Red and Brooks. Same same landladies, or there maybe different landladies. Because I googled this. Okay, so maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe my fun fact was just wildly incorrect. I mean, it's all about an old men's prison. Yeah. I mean. There are several women in the film. That's still a fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we want to talk about on Thursday's show? Free energy. Don't we have that banked? Free energy sounds good. Yeah. Let's do the free energy conspiracy. We'll get to the bottom Sweet. of it. Is and the government the... hiding, is is Big Gov hiding ways to get free energy from in the American people so that we have to be reliant on fossil fuels? be the first thing they hid though so probably not probably not i trust my government um all right well we will see you guys on thursday love you guys